Okay, guys, I'm back. I'm back from my hiatus, back on this ketogenic diet. Today is October 8th, 2016. Let's get on with this weigh-in. Two seventy six point two, Hi guys, I'm back. Um, yeah, I've been gone for four months. Dang, I'm sorry. A lot has happened since my last video. Well, it started a little bit before my last video. Um, as you can see with my wing in and my body shot, I didn't lose any more weight and I actually gained weight. Um, yeah, like I said, a lot has happened since, you know, my last win. Um, wow. I can't believe I'm sitting here, you know, videotaping this right now. You know, I when I started the ketogenic diet October for the second time, I had envisioned this go round. Wait, excuse me. All right, um, I'm back. I'm sorry. I had to gather myself because this is kind of hard. Like I said, um, you know, when I restarted the diet in October, I envisioned myself now, and you know, close to a hundred pound weight loss and. You know, and just feeling feeling better about myself and looking better. And, you know, I just envisioned a whole different scenario than now, than what I'm experiencing now. And, you know, it's crazy that I'm here next week would be a year that I restarted this keto chicken diet. And I am nowhere near where I wanted to be. And, you know, um, dag, that's all I can say is dag. Whew. So right before my last video, um, maybe a couple of weeks before my last video, you know, I wasn't telling anybody anything. I was having a lot of, um, pelvic pain. It's a lot of pelvic pain and, you know, I would pile on the Motrin, you know, and Tylenol for the pain. And, um, you know, I discussed with you guys that I had fibroids, you know, two big ones. And it made me look like I was, what, four to six months pregnant and all that stuff, you know. And um, what I didn't say was that they were, they found out that they were degenerating. Meaning that they were losing its blood supply. They were getting so big that it started to lose its blood supply. Like the, the blood that was supplying the fibroids weren't supplying it enough. So the fibroids begin to die. And when your fibroids die or degenerate, as they say, it causes pain. It's like the fibroid is dying. It's dying and... That causes so much pain, and I've been in so much pain along with the heavy bleeding. Because when you have fibroids, I don't care if your fibroid is this big, you can bleed profusely. And I had two big ones, two 
one was the size of a melon, like a honeydew melon, and the other one was the size a little smaller than a honeydew melon. I'll show pictures later, but um, so they began, they were, they started to hurt and hurt, and you know, I put up the charade that I was fine, and you know, and all that didn't, didn't really show my pain to people, you know, because I don't like to. I don't like for people to pity me because of pain or, you know, you all right. I already have migraines and everybody know I suffer from migraines. So I didn't want to add on another ailment because, you know, some people feed off of that mess, not me. So I just kept that pelvic pain quiet and stuff and try to, you know. And so I went and got it. You know, I, they, my gynecologist developed a plan for me to see about getting my fibroids removed so before that he wanted me to go see a reproductive endocrinologist so I already know what a reproductive endocrinologist is it's a doctor who uh, basically helps infertile people to reproduce to have um, children who can't who are infertile for or for whatever reason and uh, you know I asked him you know why do you need me to see a reproductive endocrinologist and he stated that you know um since I am over 35 and you know um and then I don't have any children and I have this issue with my fibroids that you know it's good for me to go see one to see what my options are if I still want children because um he would recommend me having a hysterectomy if I didn't have, if I didn't plan on having children instead of just taking the fibroids out, you know, that scared the hell out of me because, you know, ever since I was a little girl, I dreamt of becoming a mother. There was nothing else that I wanted more than to become a loving mother to my children. And, you know, I've always envisioned, I always knew in my heart that I was going to be a mother. So when he said that word hysterectomy, and I, I don't have a chick or child, that messed me up. That messed me up. So he recommended a reproductive endocrinologist to me, and the one he, the one that he recommended me to, she is very popular. She has experience with fibroids. She removes fibroids. She does hysterectomies. And she is also, you know, a reproductive endocrinologist. So I immediately called her to set up an appointment. And she didn't have an appointment until the end of June. And they found out and they just, you know, talked about my fibroids. And it directed me about around April. You know, I think around April. You know. And I'm like, I'm just getting this news that he recommends me to have a hysterectomy. And I can't even get an appointment to the end of June. And I'm the type of person where if I want something done, if I need to get something done, I don't have time to wait in a week or two. I don't have time for that foolishness. I need this. I need to know now. What's my options? I need, you know, I'm not that type of person. Well, you know, I'm going to wait. Uh-uh. No. I, I, I'm very impatient when it comes to stuff like that. So I got on the phone lines, you know, I know she's good. You know, she was worth the wait, but not me. So I went and searched, you know, searched for another reproductive, reproductive endocrinologist. And just so happened, I found one in, in this, in her group in the one that I wanted group. So they can work together. So I've got an appointment that next week and, um, so, yeah, I got the appointment with her, and she, you know, talked to me, you know, and, and discussed the options. She said, you know, well, due to, due to the size of your fibroids, um, you know, we would normally recommend for you to have a hysterectomy. But, since you don't have any children, what we will do is we will um, remove the fibroids. You know, and, but before we do that, let's get some tests done. So, so, um, they already knew what size they were because I, you know, 
up to the point where they diagnosed me having fibroids, you know, whatever, I had to get, I had to get an HSG. I had to get, that was the most painful thing in the world. And I had to get an MRI of my pelvic, pelvis. And it showed the size, the dimension, all kinds of stuff, you know, with my reproductive system. So they knew, she already knew the size and stuff, but she wanted to do blood work. So, you know, I'm a nurse, but, you know, that's not my, you know, reproductive stuff is not my area. So I said, well, why do you need to get, you know, blood test? She's like, well, you know, since you told me that you want to have children and you are 38, which means you are of an advanced maternal age. And I just want to get, you know, get some blood tests done to see where you, where you're at with perimenopause. I was like, what? I said, oh no, honey. I said, I'm not in, I'm not in menopause at all. I have no symptoms of menopause. And she, you know, she kind of gets, she said, no, I don't mean that you're in menopause, but you know, by your blood test, we can tell if you're nowhere near it or you're in the middle of it. Or you're, you know, bam, at menopause. And, and we, we just want to test your ovarian reserve and blah, 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 blah. So she was saying all this. And I'm just looking at her, literally looking at her lips moving. You know how when you're watching TV, when you're watching a, a program and somebody is like looking at, staring, staring at somebody when they talk in their mouth and they're zooming in their mouth like blah, blah. That's literally what I was doing. I was standing in her mouth, and her mouth was moving in slow motion, and I didn't hear anything she was saying. So, you know, I, I told her to stop saying, you know what, can you please write down the stuff that you're telling me? I need to write, you know, I need to research all this stuff. And she was talking about AMA, AMH, FSH. These are the, the levels to test your ovaries and see where your ovaries at. And a couple of other things, and... She was like, she needs to see where I'm at, you know, if I want to still have children. So she threw out the hysterectomy off the table and she, you know, she was going to um, have my fibers removed. But before that, she needs to see where I'm at. So I got the test done. So, you know, I go home, Dr. Google, Google and everything. And looking at AMH, FSH, those, those hormones test where your ovaries are how strong your ovaries are how many eggs your, how many follicles you have how many eggs your ovaries producing you know stuff like that and so you know i pretty much did my research and so I, I pretty i knew pretty much what all this stuff was and i got my test results back and the long story short baby if i don't have kids now they're telling me if I don't have kids now, if I don't free, if I don't at least freeze my eggs, then they don't know. It's it's a gamble because you know they want your AMH levels to be a certain level. Let's just say, for instance, they want your two point three is good for AMH. Two point three is good. One is like borderline. I'm at. 0 0.58 so I'm classified as, as having diminished ovarian reserve meaning that I barely got eggs so I probably got 20,000 eggs left and you're saying oh that's a lot no that's not a lot and my FSH they want your FSH to be 7 and under Mine's is 10.2. So there's so when I sat that back down with her and she was talking to me about my level, she's like, well, you know, you're 38. And this making me feel like I'm an old lady. You're 38. Your levels are like uh, below average and this and that third. The least you can do is just freeze your eggs. You know, get your egg, get, freeze your eggs. So when you, you know, do decide to have children, you know, you'll have eggs left. And not only, not only about the egg quantity, that determines your quality of eggs. And you know, when you have a bad quality of eggs, that means that the embryo, the fetus is not of quality, meaning that miscarriages happen. When most people have miscarriages, is due to, nine times out of ten, is due to a chromosomal abnormality, meaning that the... the, the 
embryo might have a mental retardation, all kinds of genetic defects and stuff like that. And so she was like, well, you know, it's not, it's not the time to act, you know, whatever. So she was like, we're, we're going to get these, my wall dry. We're going to get these, um, fibroids out and everything. And then we're going to talk about a plan. So I'm like, I'm just, I just went numb. Like, I just went numb and, you know, when she said that, I just literally went numb. I'm sorry this, this video was long, but, you know, I gotta tell you what's been going on. So, all right, so she said, let's get these fibroids out. So, she wanted to schedule an appointment because she doesn't actually do the removal of the fibroids. So she referred me back to the lady that I had to wait till the end of June, which, which I didn't want to wait. And they set me an appointment for September 19th to have a consultation. Not for the surgery, a consultation. So this was around, this is a, this is maybe like June 10th or something. Yeah, I had, yep, I had that appointment with that lady, June 10th. And even though, you know, I did have that appointment with that lady the end of June, I found out I had to, um, I got a student appointment with the other lady, June 10th. So my appointment to have a consultation for the fiber removal with the lady was September 19th. I said, three whole months from now? Three whole months from now? You want me to wait? You already told me. My clock is ticking. If I'm going to go get these fibroids out and start with at least freezing my eggs, don't you think I should start now? She's like, yeah, I know, but we're so booked. I said, all right. I set the appointment for uh, September 19th. Fine. When I got home, I got on my got on the phone again. Found out um, doctors who do my mectomies in the, in, the, you know, in, the, in the network of my insurance. I found a doctor. I don't have time to be waiting on people. People don't really, people don't understand you because they're not, you know, they don't go through the things you're going through. You can't tell me that my my, bio, my biological clock is ticking. I got to hurry up and do this stuff. Bam, bam, bam. And then give me an appointment three months back, three months, you know, ahead. No, you can't do that. You can't scare me to death and tell me that you're going to set me in a, up an appointment three months ahead. Oh, no. Mm -mm. I got in the phone. So, I got in the phone June 10th, June 11th. No, June tenth, June thirteenth. I, you know, I ended up finding a doctor that did. Um, he was a gynecologist. He was. Uh, he did. He specialized in fiber removal. Got a consultation with him, and he went. You know, yeah, got an appointment with him. That four days later, four days later, I got an appointment with him, and sat down with him. We discussed the problem, you know, discussed the issue. Told him that I, don't, I you know, I still wouldn't have kids. He's like, oh, yeah, piece of cake. This is surgery to be a piece of cake. And I was like, hmm? He said this surgery would be a piece of cake. So, um, he wanted me to get a couple more tests. He wanted to, he wanted me to get, um, some more M a test, uh, MRIs of my, you know, pelvic area for himself. And I did all that. And so, I ended up getting everything, all the tests that he needed me to get, I ended up getting them by the middle of July, everything. And so I had an appointment with him, sat down with him, discussed the plan. He said, all right. He showed me a model of my uterus and all that and what it looked like, blah, 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 blah. And he was like, um, we're going to have to give you a bikini cut, which is going to be it's like a cesarean from hip to hip, whatever. And we're going we're gonna to take care of this. This is going to be a piece of cake. So I was like, all right. I was so down for to get these fibroids out. I said, all right, when can I get it? Can I get it next week? Well, he started laughing. So he was like, no, um, I'll talk to my scheduler and we'll see what we can do. So I was like, oh, God, here we go. I'm, I'll end up getting it in, in January. Now, this is this is the middle of July. So that next day they called me back. They was like, well, we got you scheduled for August 15th to get this fibroid removal. Ciao. I had a fit. I was like, oh my God. Thank you, God. So long story short, um, from the time 
from the time I got my test results back from the first lady saying that I have diminished ovarian reserve and you better start now. That literally put, I was so numb and depressed that this is leading to me, this is leading after my last video. I was, I was nothing. I felt nothing. Sticking to that ketogenic diet was the last of my problems. You know, I didn't totally deviate from it. Because, you know, I still had a, a, a goal in mind. And, you know, I still, you know, but it was literally, literally probably at the bottom of my list. So, gradually I got off of the diet. I'm not going to lie. And the depression had started. Like, literally. Like, dang. It happened fast, though. Like, gradual but fast. And mm -mm, I didn't care. I did not care about no ketogenic diet. You know, I, it's, you know, still was in the recesses of my mind. And I did not get on the scale from probably the middle of June to now till today and so much stuff has, has happened i got the fibers removed on august 15th i had a six-week recovery i was out of work for six weeks and that was the painfulest thing i ever went through i know how women go through c-sections and stuff like that but oh my god the pain that i had i barely can move you know, I'm already depressed from just hearing all the news. And so, during my recovery, we doggone right I ate. I sure did. You know, I'm an emotional eater. And when I'm depressed, I eat. And so, you know, I begin to eat while on recovery and not really moving. So, I packed on the pounds. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even going to freaking lie, you know. And... Some of, some of you guys, and I really appreciate it, you will check back in on me, you know, and, well, I'm looking for you, you know, don't give up. And I would I would lie and say, I'm, I'm still on a diet. I'm sorry, guys, I lied. But I was in a, a, a great depression. And, yeah, so, you know, had the point, uh, you know, got the surgery, you know, I'm done. And last month, I had another appointment. And so, with the reproductive and career technologist, I had an appointment um, last month, September 11th. He had an appointment. And so, she was like, you know, if you wanted to start trying to conceive or have children, you probably could start in December. But, you know, you told me that, you know, you want to do, you want to, um, you know, freeze your eggs, get some eggs and freeze your eggs or whatever. And so, I agreed to that. And she was like, well... Then she dropped a bomb on me. She was like, but in order for us to freeze your eggs, we have to do an egg retrieval. And with the egg retrieval, you would have to lose weight. I just, I said, I'd be danged. She was like, because you're going to be under anesthesia. You're going to be in our clinic. You're not going to be in a, a, a regular hospital setting where they have all the machines you're gonna be in a you're gonna be in our clinic and you're gonna be under anesthesia and with your body weight it it poses as, as a risk and so you need to have your BMI under 40 and your BMI is 50 and she's like so you need to get your BMI to under 40 to get this done so I was like oh my god oh my freaking god so when I did my calculations she when she weighed me at the time, I didn't look. I didn't look at the calculations when the, when the her nurse when the, her nurse had weighed me. I didn't look. I was like, I don't want to know how much I weigh. So when I sat down with her, she was like, Your yeah, BMI is fifty, and he's be forty. So she's like, So with your weight, she didn't say my weight. Thank God, she's like, With your weight, you would have to lose sixty pounds to get your BMI at forty. So you need to lose a little more than sixty pounds. I just, I don't know. I said, all right, see what I can do. I'm like, all right. She's like, well, you need to really get, you know, 
I don't really rush people about losing weight. She's like, but you really need to hurry up and lose this weight if you want to, you know, get this done. So I said, all right. So um, today, I, w I, came, I went back to work last week. I went to, but Yeah, I went back to work. Yeah, last week on the September 29th. But um, I started back on this ketogenic diet today, October 8th. So, guys, like I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I disappointed you. And, you know, dang. I'm back at it. And I really have a, now I really have to lose this weight now. Because there's nothing more that I want than, than to be a mother. And it's basically a race against time because, I don't know. But anyway, um, I'm back now. I'm sorry that I was gone for so long. Thank you for the ones who um, who reached out to me to find out what was going on, your concerns. I really appreciate it. And, you know, I'm just grateful that I have people that care about me and that don't even know me but care about me. I'm grateful and I'm back on it. And I have a goal. I need to lose this weight so I can get this egg retrieval done. And to be honest with you, I am even thinking about getting IVF. You know, I don't have Mr. Right, but I was doing research and they were saying that the egg, when you do, when you, um, egg freezing, when it's time to throw them out to use them, a lot of them die. And so I'm even thinking about, um, getting IVF and having children on my own just because of my age and all the factors I'm just gonna keep it real. Um, we even we even discussed that too. So I have a lot to think about. She told me she told me that she wants something. She wants to see me in December with a drastic weight loss. You know, not the full sixty, but a drastic weight loss. So I don't know. But um, I'll show you pictures. I'll insert pictures of my fibroids because when he cut them out, um. He took pictures of him and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I'm back, guys. And thank you. If you if you sat here and listened to this story, thank you. So, I'm back, child. Mm. Yeah. Thanks for watching.